Hello, everyone, and welcome to the December 2022 Patch Report. I am your host, Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness for the Zero Day Initiative, and of course, our Chief Patch Wrangler here. We've got a very small release to discuss, but there are a couple very interesting things. So without any further delay, let's get right to it. So we'll begin with Adobe, who had a mere three patches for Experience Manager, Illustrator, and Campaign Classic. None of these are under active attack. None of them were publicly known at the time of release. So not a whole lot to discuss there. Let's move along. Microsoft had 52 new patches, which puts it as one of their smallest releases of the year. Uh, however, for the year total, there are over 900 CVEs fixed, makes it their second largest year ever. Uh, 2020 is still to be reckoned with. Uh, of the ones that are out there, there's one being publicly exploited right now, and that's the first one here, which is our Windows Smart Screen Security Feature Bypass. Last month, we had one that was uh, Mark of the Web. This is kind of tied into it. Uh, this is only rated as moderate by Microsoft, but I think it's much more important that, first of all, because it's actually being exploited. But as you can see, like within the second one, it really could be used in phishing attacks. It could make it very, very effective. Essentially, it takes a file and it removes the Mark of the Web feature from it, or it makes it so that the Mark of the Web isn't recognized by other security features that Microsoft has, like smart screen and things like that. And uh, you open files without warning which would be very handy if you're going to spoof emails in Outlook. So here's an Outlook for Mac spoofing vulnerability. This is our second big one this month. Uh, and it allows you to appear as someone else uh, in email. So again, combine it with the first one and all of a sudden you've got an email from your boss that has something like executive compensation.xls, uh, which is very, very difficult to not click on. Uh, and then you open up the file and you don't get a warning. So there you go. Very interesting bug on that one too. Next up, we have a PowerShell RCE. That one's pretty interesting. And, and it, this one is rated critical and it absolutely should be. Uh, and the reason I, I say this is because threat actors uh, like to live off the land, as they say, meaning they're just gonna use the tools that they are, have on the system and PowerShell happens to be one of those. So you can restrict PowerShell to certain uh, level certain activities, but this bypass uh, allows you to bypass the, those restrictions and then you can use PowerShell for anything. So pretty nifty there for attackers probably to use as a secondary attack after they have initial access, uh, but really interesting nonetheless. And finally, as someone who's done a lot of incident response in his career, uh, this Azure Network Watcher Agent Security Feature Bypass is definitely one that stood out to me because it allows you to turn off uh, logging. So uh, you, you can use this uh, agent to do packet captures, uh, for example, on a virtual machine. And uh, this allows you to turn it off and there go your logs. And uh, kind of like picks are different happen, logs are it didn't happen. Okay, looking at the table, you can see everything that's listed there. Just the one other bug that is uh, listed as publicly known, that's a graphics kernel elevation privilege. We don't have a lot of information on that. Lots of office graphic bugs here from uh, Mr. Powell at the Zero Day Initiative. So it is a smaller release this month and looking at the uh, table here, we can kind of see why. Actually, hang on. Okay, now I have my tinfoil hat on. My tinfoil hat theory is they do a smaller release in December. Just in case anything breaks, they don't want to shut down like internet shopping or something. Uh, so smaller December release, tinfoil hat theory done. Here you go. Now let's go back to the land of reality. So looking at the rest of the release, uh, we've got a couple critical rated bugs in SSTP. So if you're using RAS, uh, definitely make sure you take care of those. Also SharePoint. Uh, people were seeing SharePoint exploited using really old bugs in the wild. Not even new stuff, not zero days, stuff that's two years old. So please patch your SharePoint servers. A bunch of other RCE bugs, uh, but these are typically open and get own bugs uh, that aren't really that interesting unless you happen to be sending around malware in an office document. Uh, that's definitely a thing. Uh, beyond that, there's some EOP bugs. Most of these require a local user to execute specially crafted code. Um, the, again, the DirectX kernel bug is listed as public. Um, also, there's one in Syspot here. So again, this is I'm seeing these bugs pop up more often where sysinternals bugs uh, are having some elevation of privilege issues. 
So again, as a responder, I use Sysmon all the time. So definitely make sure you get these things patched because you don't want to be the person who uses uh, old tools on a, an incident response and ends up in trouble for it. Trust me on that one personally. A couple DOS, but nothing that fascinating. Uh, there's one fix for Outlook for Mac uh, that we've already talked about, but the other spoofing bug is in Edge. Uh, and that's interesting because it allows the attacker to change the content uh, of the autofill box that overlaps an error message, it, which seems cool, but I can't figure out how you'd really use that in an attack. Um, anyway, yeah, just kind of curious. That's neat. Uh, there is one advisory this month, and it's definitely important. It talks about uh, third-party drivers that appear to be certified by Microsoft. Uh, however, they aren't. And Microsoft has detected this in the wild in po post-exploitation scenarios. So definitely read that advisory and follow the guidance uh, about the additional third-party drivers. Apply that update that goes out with it. So that's it. That's our. Uh, that's the December... So that's it. That's the December release in a very quick nutshell. Uh, our next patch Tuesday will be January 10th. I will be in Orlando at a conference there for Trend Micro, and I will do this from my hotel room and post it up there. So Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, uh, Happy New Year, and I will see you the, in, in the... So that's it. Uh, the December release is small. Let's get straight to it, right to the point. Our next Patch Tuesday will be, of course, next year, January 10th. I'll be joining you from Orlando, where I'll be at a conference down there. So I'll be recording from my hotel room. We'll see what sort of background that looks like. Should be quite interesting. Uh, until then, uh, everyone stay safe. Have a Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Happy New Year. And until the next year, may all your reboots be smooth and clean.